In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. On my heart imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. During my third year of seminary, I was chosen amongst the student body to go on a mercy trip to the island of Madagascar. And while we were there, I had the opportunity to visit one of their seminaries in Ansirabe. Now, the morning that we went out to the seminary, we had a nice greasy breakfast, a nice greasy omelet, and some jet black coffee. So upon arriving at the seminary, I had to use the restroom. But unlike here, it was a little difficult to find indoor plumbing. So in order to have a little privacy, I found the closest building which happened to be a little barn filled with chickens, cows, and other animals. Now, after using the restroom, I won't describe the situation, but surrounded by less than comfortable company, I proceeded to wipe off all the filth that I got on my shoes, pants, hands, and anywhere else on my body. I went through a whole bag of sanitizing wipes in order to get the remnants of that barn off me. Praise be to God for my germaphobic wife who packed enough sanitizing wipes to last a decade. Even after that, after all the sanitizing and all the wiping, I continued to wash my hands every chance I got for the remainder of the trip lest I not clean the waste off myself. Now you might be wondering why on Christmas Eve I begin by talking about a restroom experience. Well, why not begin this day with a cute little story about babies being born, or maybe summarize the birth story of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why begin with the account of a barnyard bathroom? Why begin with something that repulsive? Well, because that's where our Savior humbled himself to be born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our Lord was born where I relieved myself. He wasn't born in a clean hospital room like most modern-day children. His parents weren't rich enough to purchase a private room at the local hospital so he could be born with the best medicines to take care of him. He wasn't born in the palace, not even in the inn with the rest of the travelers. He was born, delivered into the sinful world amongst the filth of humanity and the beasts in a feeding trough. He was born in the waste of society. He came forth into this world, born from the virgin's womb, welcomed not by kings and princes, but by the beasts wanting something to eat. Jesus was born as the lowest of the low. He left his heavenly throne where he was glorified by the angels day and night, singing his praises in order to be a servant of all. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The eternal word of God dwelt among us, not to demand service, but to serve us by giving up his entire self. He came not to live a long glorified life. No, our Lord's martyred life on this earth was for the sole purpose of going to the cross to die for the sin of the world. He came, born in the muck of human depravity, in order to bear the sin of the world and die the death of all mankind. Jesus was born in that soiled manger in order to show the purpose of his becoming man. So what do you and I do with this Jesus? 
What do we do with the stains of Christ's blood that he gives to us in the gospel proclaimed and the sacraments distributed? Do we go forth into this world with the blood of Christ staining every inch of our existence? Do we go forth into this world like those shepherds dropping everything in order that we may dwell with Christ? Do we tell everyone we meet about the birth of our Savior and the purpose of that birth was for him to die for the sin of the world on the cross? No. We do everything we can to rid ourselves of our blood-stained Savior. We take out the sanitizing wipes of this world's pleasures and cleanse ourselves of everything Christ has and will always give to us because we don't want it. We treat the forgiveness of sin that Christ gives us the same way I treated the filth I got from that Malagasy barn. We do everything we can to get it off us. We never open the door for our Savior. Rather, we reject Him, and when blessed by Him, we cleanse ourselves as soon as we walk out of church. One of my favorite little stories Luther told was the story of the devil. The devil was bored one day. So to spin past the time a little bit, the devil went to mass. And he stood in the back, he stood, and he watched everyone as the liturgy of the mass continued. And it got to that point in the Nicene Creed where it says that Jesus became man. Homo factus est. He became man. And traditionally what you're supposed to do when that part of the creed comes up is they're supposed to genuflect. Get down on one knee. Not just bow the head a little bit, but to get down on one knee. Not doing a Tebow or something like that, but getting down on one knee because this God, the Word made flesh, became man. Therefore, we genuflect. But the devil's watching and no one does it. They get past that part in the creed and no one bows. They keep their heads straight up and the devil gets angry. So he goes up to the priest. He puts his hand in his mouth and opens it wide and says, You fool! This son of God didn't die for me. He died for you. Look what you do now. If he had died for me, I would be genuflecting. I would be glorifying him day and night, but he didn't. He became man, that man may be redeemed. This is what we do. Because we reject those things of Christ. Well, guess what? It's Christmas again. No matter what you do, Christmas happens. So it's Christmas, and what have you and I done yet again? Everything wrong. You've sinned, I've sinned. And praise be to God for that, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. This is Christmas. Christ has done everything right. We've spent a whole other year messing up yet again. New Year's resolution failed. Sin continues. Bad practices continues. We have messed up yet again, but praise be to God, Jesus is the righteous one. The righteous one who humbled himself to be born of a virgin that you and I may be delivered from sin, death, and the power of the devil. This righteous one, Jesus the Christ, has made all things new this day. 
unto us, not unto the demons, not unto the angels, not unto the beasts, but unto us men. And for our salvation is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This is Christmas. It's not about what you give. It's about what you receive. Receive the gift of forgiveness this day for all the heavy burdens you brought here with you this night. Christ has taken the heavy burden of the law off your shoulders and replaces it with the light yoke of his gospel. Though you and I may remove the stains of Christ's blood on our sinful flesh, this day he covers you yet again. This day hear the blessed proclamation of Christ's sent angel. I forgive you your sin. It is a Merry Christmas, for you're forgiven and made new in the blood of Christ the Savior. Feast this day on the body and blood of the Lord, you who are baptized, for Christ came for this very reason, that you may eat and live. Rejoice, you who dwell on this earth, for Christ was born for you. He died for you, and he is risen, that you too may rise on the last day and join with the heavenly host in the unending praises to our newborn King. Hallelujah! Christ Jesus is born this day. What a good thing it is that the eternal Logos, the eternal Word of God, became man. Dwell on that. I don't, I don't know how we can get past it. It is such an amazing gift that we are free. Free from the tyranny of the devil. Free from the bondage of sin. Free from the curse of the law. Because the word became flesh. Dwelt among us. Went to the cross. And is now risen for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.